This should not exist, but it does. And no, your mind is not playing tricks on you. This really is an iPod Touch fourth generation running iOS 7.0. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and iOS 7 on the iPod Touch 4 has never been a thing until now. Right off the bat, all credit for this goes to at Ralph0045 on Twitter. He walked me through the whole process of doing this, and he's the one who figured all this out. Honestly, he's a magician to me. I don't understand this stuff. Don't get the wrong impression. I do know how to do it now, though, so I am planning on doing a tutorial if there's enough interest. So if you'd like to see one, maybe hit that like button, and I'll try to do a tutorial as soon as I can. All that said, this is an iPod Touch fourth generation on iOS 7.0. Holy cow, this is real. This isn't fake. And it's super slow. Going into settings general about, we can see that there's a reason Apple never supported iOS 7 on this iPod. It takes forever. Seriously. Once we get there, we can see that we're running iOS 7.0 on the iPod 4. You can double check the model number there if you'd like. It is indeed legitimate. That is the iPod 4's model number. Interestingly, while it knows that it's an iPod by the model number, you'll see we have a phone app and options for cellular. The reason for this is to get this thing to boot in the first place, we need an IPSW. Now if you don't know, an IPSW is essentially the software file for an iOS device, and uh, the iPod 4 doesn't have an IPSW for iOS 7. So what Ralph did is he modded an iPhone 4 IPSW to get this to work. So the device thinks it's an iPhone 4. If you plug this thing into a computer, it sometimes will recognize it as an iPhone, then get stuck, and other times it just stays grayed out. And this is in my experience. I, Honestly, this has been done so little, I don't know if other people are getting the same results as me or not. This iPod 4 was running iOS 6.1.6 .6 before I did this, and it is an 8GB model. Apparently, some people may have issues with 16GB models for whatever reason, so luckily for me, I was able to avoid that altogether. Uh, there are others who have gotten this working. One guy got it working on a 64GB iPod, which is pretty cool. Now, this is very new. As far as I know, this has never been done before now, and that's kind of insane. Looking around the iPod a bit more, again, it is really, really, really slow, but it does work, more or less. Functionality varies from task to task and app to app. Really basic stuff like the notes app or the calculator work perfectly fine. However, the camera doesn't. The app doesn't freeze, but everything stays black and I can't take a picture. Although I can swipe back from video to photo. I don't know why. Most of those basic stock apps work fine, but when we want to do something like the app store, Wi-Fi does not work. If you go into it on settings, you'll see that it's grayed out with no option to connect to anything. Bit of a pity, but certainly not surprising. Due to this, there isn't really much we can do with this iPod, except, I guess, reflect on how impossible this whole thing is. There is no practical use whatsoever to actually boot iOS 7 on here. It barely works, and the tasks it can do are simplistic and basic at best. It can't connect to your computer, and it can't use internet. Again, this shouldn't exist, and it kind of feels like it knows it with frequent crashes, at least on my model. Can't speak for everybody else, but for me, it is not stable. Since I've recorded all this, I'm editing right now, I've talked to Revac Tech and he also is having a lot of crashing issues, so I'm just gonna say this is probably a pretty common thing and something you should expect if you're gonna do this. After around 15 minutes or so of use, it seems to freak out and then go into DFU mode. I can't seem to find a trigger for it, it just seems to be kind of random, and it'll happen even when I'm not using it, so I'm not sure what that's all about. Luckily, once you've figured everything out once and have booted it, it really isn't hard to do it again. And actually, the process itself isn't as difficult as I thought it would be. So hi, checking in again. It's Thursday right now. For whatever reason, the iPod has become very, very unstable. I'm lucky if it lasts two minutes before crashing into DFU mode. Not sure why. Yesterday, it was going for about 15 minutes without issue. Um, 10, 15 minutes usually. Luckily, pretty much all the footage except for like one shot was done, so <laughs> that wasn't uh, too much of an issue. Uh, a little annoyed by that, thought I'd mention it. Overall, this is one of the craziest and frankly, coolest iOS hacks I 
think I've ever seen. While there's no practical use, the fact that this just is there, that this iPod is running iOS 7, you know, something that Apple never intended to happen ever is happening, is just really cool, at least in my opinion. It's honestly insane that people are still dedicating their time to messing with these old devices, and it's so amazing to see that there's still so much more we can do with them all these years later. Again, a huge, huge, huge props to Ralph for figuring this out. This really is amazing. For those curious or actually wanting to do this, I would like to do a tutorial soon, so hopefully that'll be coming. And uh, with that said, I don't think there's much more to say here. It's pretty straightforward. It's just an iPod 4 running iOS 7. So uh, with that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you should go follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech so you can see whenever something cool like this happens. Maybe like the video if you want that tutorial and subscribe for more content just like this. Maybe comment your thoughts on this paradox of technology in the comments. You know, that's usually where people comment things. Uh, what do you make of it? Again, thank you for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.